heard it. Let's get going. I'm calling this hearing of the Boston City Council's Ways and Means Committee to order. Um, for the record, my name is Kenzie Bach. I'm the District 8 City Councilor and also the Chair of the City Council's Committee on Ways and Means. Um, and I want to welcome you to the first Boston City Council hearing of 2021. This public hearing is being recorded and live streamed at boston.gov slash city dash council dash TV. It will be rebroadcast on Xfinity channel eight, RCN channel 82 and Fios channel 964. We'll be taking public testimony at the end of this hearing. So if you wish to testify via video conference, please email Michelle, that's M-I-C-H-E-L-L-E dot A dot Goldberg, G-O-L-D-B-E-R-G at boston.gov to sign up. Um, we ask that when you're called, you state your name and affiliation or residence and limit your comments to no more than two minutes to ensure that all comments can be heard. Um, and if you're watching this uh, now or later and you want to submit written testimony, you can do that by emailing ccc.wm, that's ccc.wm at boston.gov. Today's hearing is on docket 0114, message and order approving a supplemental appropriation of $1,857,220 for the Boston Public Schools for FY21 to cover the cost items contained within the collective bargaining agreements between the Boston School Committee and the Boston Association of School Administrators and Supervisors basis. Um, and also docket 0115, which is message in order to reduce the appropriation for the reserve for collective bargaining by $1,857,220 to provide funding for the FY21 cost items contained within the collective bargaining agreements between the Boston School Committee and the Boston Association of School Administrators and Supervisors basis. Um, I am joined here today uh, by my colleague, Councillor Ed Flynn from District 2. Um, and also Councillor Liz Braden from District 9. Um, and I also would like to um, read into the record a letter from Councillor Julia Mejia, who regrets that she cannot be with us this morning. Um, Councillor Mejia is a member of the Ways and Means Committee um, and a very, um, a very regular attendee. So we're sorry that she wasn't able to make it today, but this is her letter to me. Um, January 22nd, 2021, dear Madam Chair, Madam Vice Chair and members of the Committee on Ways and Means, I am writing to inform you of my absence from today's hearing in the Committee on Ways and Means on Docket 0114 and 0115, a hearing regarding supplemental appropriations to cover the FY21 cost items within the collective bargaining agreement between VPS and BASIS. Due to a previously scheduled engagement, I will not be sitting in. However, someone from my office will be listening and following along. Sincerely, Julia Mejia, Boston City Council at large. So thank you to Councillor Mejia for that um, and to Jacob, who I know is watching on her behalf. Um, and uh, I, I wanna go in a moment to our, um, our speaker, which will be Mr. Jeremiah Hassan, um, Director of Labor Relations for BPS. Um, but before I do, I just wanna give my colleagues, um, Councillor Flynn and Councillor Braden, a, a moment to say anything before the hearing begins. So Councillor Flynn, you have the floor. Thank you. Um, thank you, Madam Chair, um, for chairing this hearing. Um, and for your leadership on, on, on this issue and on all ways and means issues. We're, we're extremely lucky to have you as, as the chair. I also wanna say thank you to uh, Mr. Hassan as well for the important work he does in the BPS team. I'm here to learn more about the contract between BPS and the uh, Boston Association of School Administrators and Supervisors. I know that our school staff is a is working tremendously hard to give our students a great education in our school system, especially during this pandemic. I'm looking forward to learning more about this collective bargaining agreement. And I'm a strong supporter of, the, of collective bargaining. I know it's a critical part of the negotiation process. And I also know that our uh, administrators and supervisors deserve and earned an increase in pay. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that we have a proposal here and I'm, I'm looking forward to supporting it because I know the ter terrific work that our administrators and supervisors do every day in, in, in educating our students. So thank you, Mr. Hassan, and thank you to Chair Bach. Thank you so much, Councillor Flynn. Um, and Councillor Braden's waived her uh, opportunity to give opening comments. Um, so before I pass it to Mr. Hassan, I'll just say, for those watching at home, um, just to explain a little bit of process here, 
Uh, the, the city of Boston has a large number of unionized workers, as Councillor Flynn said, and we're big believers here in uh, labor rights and the power of a union. Um, and, uh, and those different units, bargaining units, they're called, um, on sort of, you know, often three, four year cycles, um, sometimes two, it's complicated, but uh, they reach agreements with um, the city and in the case of the schools, the school committee, uh, around what compensation and other aspects of their contract are going to look like going forward. Um, those negotiations happen outside of the remit of the Boston City Council, um, and they ultimately result in an, in an agreement letter signed by um, both, you know, either the schools or um, the cities uh, when it's when it's not the schools, sort of the city's Department of Labor Relations, and then um, NCFO, and then the relevant union. Um, they then have to go to that union's membership for ratification um, and when and to see whether the members support what the leadership has agreed. Um, and when they get that ratification, only then do they get submitted to us, the Boston City Council, for our review. And so this, this type of hearing comes at the end of that whole process. Um, and the reason that we have that public hearing is because typically these contracts um, involve additional, um, additional financial commitments for the city. Um, and, and often because of the negotiation cycle, we're actually retroactively funding um, money that would have come to people in the previous years, but can't come until it's been all agreed. Um, so, you know, this body and the reason this is in the Ways and Means Committee is because um, this body takes seriously its job to be a financial steward for the city um, and to oversee all appropriations. And so before we take a formal act as a council to allocate money to the funding of one of these agreements, um, we always invite uh, the relevant staff um, on, on the city side to come and just speak a little bit to the nature of the agreement um, and, uh, and sort of why it's a good deal for the city and why it makes sense for us to take this final step to fund it. Um, but it does mean that in many cases, our process like this hearing comes at the end of a long process between a large number of stakeholders previously. Um, and we, we always hold these in, in a way that's mindful of that. So. Um, Without further ado, I want to turn it over to Mr. Jeremiah Hassan, who is the Director of Labor Relations for Boston Public Schools. And I think he's going to um, share a presentation with the council and the public. Yes, good morning, Madam Chair, Council Flynn and Council Braden. Uh, thank you for having me this morning. Uh, I'm happy to, to be here to present uh, briefly on our recent agreement with the Boston Association of School Administrators and Supervisors uh, on the extension of the party's collective bargaining agreement. Uh, and we'll be asking for your support uh, in our request for a supplemental appropriation request, as you mentioned. So I'm sharing my presentation with you right now. So before we get into the terms of the recent agreement, I'll just give you a little background information on uh, basis and the bargaining uh, and the recent negotiations uh, that we've concluded here. Uh, BASIS is comprised of school-based and non-school-based administrators and supervisors, excluding principals and heads of school. So this unit covers uh, system principals, directors of instruction, direct, uh, program directors, assistant program directors, uh, that level of employee in the district. Uh, there are approximately 240 full-time employees at this moment. It, it varies uh, by a few numbers based on retirements. Uh, changes in, in staffing at individual schools. So there's roughly 240 employees at this time. Uh, as you may notice, um, the, this was a rather lengthy negotiation. The party's uh, last contract expired in 2016. Uh, we've been bargaining since that time. Uh, it's been a, a slow process, but ultimately uh, in light of the pandemic, and uh, the support that we've received from our basis members, uh, we were able to really buckle down this fall and kind of scale back uh, our proposals uh, and the unit did likewise. Uh, and the parties were able to reach an agreement on uh, October 6th, the, the negotiating teams anyways, uh, the basis membership ultimately ratified the tentative agreement on, I believe it was October 28th that they had their union meeting. And uh, in, in the school committee ultimately voted on the agreement on December 2nd and approved, uh, approved the tentative agreement reached by the negotiating teams. So 
getting into the terms of the agreement, it's, it covers a four year period. It's actually two agreements, two two year agreements uh, from September 2016 to August 2018, and then August 2018, or September 2018 to August 2020. Uh, so the, the contract will actually have expired and the parties will be right back at the bargaining table. Um, but what we agreed to was uh, wage increases that are consistent with the majority of our other bargaining units. It's 2% increases uh, over the four year duration of the contract. Uh, you'll see the majority of, of BPS units got 2%, uh, the majority of units across the city uh, got 2% increases during this period. So it, it's a contract that's um, consistent and equitable with our other, uh, the majority of our other employees. I say majority because um, you may recall the BTU actually got a 3% increase in there at one point, but uh, that was in exchange for some uh, for some different reforms that, that the school committee was looking for at that time. Uh, so here we have 2% general wage increases across the each of the four years that the contract will cover. Uh, in exchange for the general wage increases, uh, there was some agreed upon staffing uh, language reform. Um, what we agreed upon is that uh, bargaining unit members who, who are laid off from their positions uh, will no longer have recall rights to a new vacancy in the position uh, or in the unit. And the, the purpose of this uh, reform from the committee's perspective is it uh, allows school leaders and uh, department heads to create administrative teams uh, with the certainty that they'll be able to select a candidate uh, of, their, of their choosing rather than um, if they create a new position in their office or their school, uh, risking that um, another bargaining unit member who had been laid off would automatically bump into that position. Uh, so we, we believe this is a significant uh, gain for the district uh, and improves the uh, staffing authority for school leaders and department heads. So we're pleased uh, with that reform language. Um, and again, we think the, the wage increases agreed upon here are fair and consistent with our other employees and the bargaining units across the city of Boston. So obviously you're here because you're concerned about the, the financial impact of the, of the agreement. Uh, so here we have a, a breakdown of the costs um, of the recent agreement. As you'll see, it's about 8.2% more than the uh, cost of the contract for uh, FY17 or FY16, I believe that should be. And then the FY17 increase uh, you'll see is just over uh, 375,000. Uh, you'll see the annual increases. And these increases are actually paid for by a reserve fund that the committee set aside uh, anticipating that this we, we would reach an agreement um, somewhat in this in this range for, for wage increases. Uh, what we're here for is to request your support for the uh, supplemental appropriation quest, request for the FY21 uh, year. And you'll see it's the annualized cost of $1.857,220,000. So um, that's what we're looking for in this, uh, in, in our request to the city council and uh, I'm happy to answer any additional questions that you may have. Um, again, I, I just want to thank Councilor Flynn for his uh, support in his opening statement uh, and just kind of reiterate that we've gotten a great amount of support from the, these bargaining unit members during this, uh, this pandemic and with, with the um, ongoing challenges that the school department is, faces, uh, is facing. The basis members have really stepped up. So uh, we believe this is a fair agreement and we uh, request that you you support uh, our request for the supplemental appropriation request. So with that, I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Great, thank you so much. Um, I'll hold my questions to the end and go first to my colleagues. So I'll go to Councillor Flynn and then I wanna note we've been joined by uh, Councillor Michael Flaherty at large. So I'll go to Councillor Flynn for any comments and questions and then to Councillor Flaherty. Um, and then to Councillor uh, Anissa Sabi George, who's also um, joined us, who is uh, who is also an at-large councillor um, and my vice chair for the committee. Um, so, uh, Councillor Flynn. Yeah, thank thank you, Councillor Bach, uh, Chair Bach, and uh, Mr. Austin. Thank you for you and your team for the ongoing negotiations with the um, 
with our supervisors and administrators um, in, the, in the BPS. That's how, that's how our contracts are settled is sitting, sitting at the table and respecting each other and listening to each other. So um, sometimes they're difficult or sometimes they're, they, they're, they're easier, but the most important part of it is um, treating everyone, treating both sides with, with respect and dignity. So um, I'm looking forward to supporting it. And um, again, just want to say thank you to the, your BPS team, but also to the Boston Association of School Administrators and Supervisors that do an incredible job educating, working with our teachers um, in educating our students, especially during these difficult times. And they provide a tremendous service to our BPS families, but also they help build our city and they make our city stronger. So uh, thank you to the BPS team and to um, the school administrators as well. Um, Council Block, I don't have any, I don't have any questions. Thank you. Great, thank you so much, Councillor Flynn. Councillor Flaherty. Thank you, Madam Chair. I was speaking for with uh, our colleague, Councilor Flynn's comments, and just thank Jeremy for uh, Jeremiah for his uh, thorough presentation. And uh, I, I paid attention with interest, and we'll defer and we'll support the chair's recommendation. And I appreciate your efforts this morning, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you so much, Councilor Flaherty. Um, Councilor Asabi George. Thank you, Madam Chair. I don't know if there's a problem this morning. I can't get onto my video. But um, like my colleagues, happy to support this effort, happy to hear the presentation um, and look forward to uh, soon passage. Thank you, Madam Chair. Great, thank you so much, Councilor Sabi George. Um, Carrie, can we just double check if there's a way to get the video enabled? Um, but uh, yeah, well, so I'll, I'll, I just have a couple of questions, uh, Mr. Hassan, just, I mean, one is, um, uh, I just want to kind of make sure for the public it's clear. So obviously, although sometimes these negotiations go on for quite a while, it's fair to say that this was an unusually long one. Is that fair? Yes, I think that's fair to say. It's, it, it definitely went longer than any of our other uh, bargaining set, uh, negotiations with our other units. Um, you know, and I think there's a few reasons for that. As I mentioned, we reached a, a short agreement with the BTU and then actually the BTU in the meet while we were engaged in these negotiations, there were two, uh, a two year agreement with the BTU and then another three year agreement, which is also a little bit unique. So that kind of uh, delayed our ability to, to bargain with uh, the administrators and supervisors. So that pushed it off. Um, you know, I think both sides uh, were, were sticking to their positions for a while, but then, you know, in light of as I mentioned, in light of everything going on with the uh, with the pandemic and kind of the changes in circumstances, we really buckled down and were able to to get to an agreement uh, this fall. So, yes, it, it, to answer your question, it was a little longer than uh, than usual, but we're pleased with where where we ended up in the agreement that we were ultimately ultimately able to get to. Great. And I, I just want to echo my um, colleagues' comments that, you know, our school administrators and for folks watching at home, this, I think um, uh, Mr. Hassan said it, but this excludes our principals and heads of school, um, but it's a lot of the folks on their leadership teams immediately beneath them. So, right, it's the assistant principals, um, what would be, what would be uh, like sort of academic uh, heads, what would be other categories of titles, just so that people at home know who we're talking about with these 240 folks. Yes. There's directors of instruction, uh, there's program directors, there's certain uh, directors and assistant directors in offices of special education or the uh, Office of English Language Learners. Um, so th there are a lot of our, as, as the name indicates, uh, supervisors and administrators of the district, uh, both school level and centrally. So they're really critical members of our uh, leadership teams. So they play a, a vital role in our, uh, the services that we're able to provide the students in Boston. Um, so, right. and, and again, I just wanna reiterate the, the support and the hard work that we've seen from uh, this bargaining unit during this uh, very unique period uh, in BPS. They've been great, they've really stepped up to the plate. Uh, so, you know, I wanna publicly thank them. And, uh, you know, I, I think this contract is, uh, is fair in light of their ethics during this time and, and always, you know, I don't want to 
um, make it sound like this is unique. They're, all, they're always critical members of our team. But. Absolutely. And I think um, also, you know, in this, in this really hard, difficult year, there's, there's needed to be so much reimagining, right, for all of our schools and all of our units. I mean, I think this also includes a bunch of the supervisory people who've been figuring out food services, right, and like, and the whole way to feed all of our kids and families in a totally new way. Um, so yeah, I just I definitely feel like they have the council's gratitude along with yours. Um, and uh, could, you, could you just speak a little bit to, um, again, I just want to land on the, on the financial point. So for folks, um, again, at home, when, the, when there's a contract out for negotiation, typically um, the school committee uh, or the budget office will set aside a certain amount of money so that when we reach an agreement, there isn't a big gap and suddenly the city's in a really tough financial situation. So, but you can never know exactly how these things are gonna go. So it's not exact, right? And so my understanding from what you're saying, Jeremiah, is that the, um, you know, so if you had, you had that slide up earlier, um, it's 4 million something, right? Is the total cost of this agreement to the, to the city. But, um, but there's about 3 million, let's just say I'm being round numbers that was funded in that reserve. And now we've got 1.8 that the council needs to authorize for this year. Yes, that's correct. It's, um, as you mentioned, the, uh, our budget office works with the city and creates a reserve fund for, um, outstanding liabilities and some of them are more certain than others. Uh, for the collective bargaining, we kind of anticipate where uh, the agreement will land within a, a given range uh, and set aside certain money, a uh, certain amount of money in each year. So as you pointed out, the total cost is, is in the $4 million range, but for the individual, uh, for the yearly payments for FY17, FY18, FY19, and FY20, uh, we had set aside money for that uh, that will come out of that reserve fund. It's for the, the current year um, that we're, we're seeking the appropriation request. And obviously, um, even though the, the um, agreement itself ends as of August 2020, right? So we're, all, we're already out of the agreement. Um, again, just for... Um, people who might be interested in it. And I'm doing all this explaining because frankly, we have quite a number of um, city contracts that are up for negotiation. So we're gonna have um, uh, many more of these coming. And I, I think it's helpful to, to tell people kind of how the process works. Um, so this, because it reaches so far back is actually for an agreement that's already expired. But the way it works is when, when there is an expired agreement, we continue on the same pay scale and the same contract provisions as the expired agreement until a new agreement is reached. So is it accurate, um, Mr. Hassan, that this, this funding, it's not just our funding to get through August, 2020, which would just be the first two months of FY21 under this agreement. It's continuing the provisions of the final year of the agreement all through this fiscal year to June 30. Yes, yeah, so that, that's correct. And you mentioned, you know, that we've been on the same, wage salary scale since the prior contract expired in 2016. So these unit members haven't seen any, any increases in their wages during that time. So um, what this agreement will do will provide them those increases retroactively. Uh, and then you will see the costs uh, of those retroactive increases uh, moving forward for, for the district and for the city. Great, yeah. And that's why, um, that's really why this is our first hearing of the year. Um, is that it's our first hearing of the year, but it's been a long time coming um, for the folks in this bargaining unit. So um, as Mr. Hassan just said, uh, you know, there's there's wage increases that people have been waiting on since 2016 um, that will only get released with a council uh, vote on this matter. So that's why we're really, um, it was filed on the first meeting of the year and we're um, get, you know, holding this hearing prior to the second meeting of the year because of, um, because of that time um, pressure that has a real impact on as, uh, as Jeremiah has said, you know, some of our really important key BPS staff's lives and financial well-being. So, um, yeah, I just want to highlight that. Uh, and I will say also, um, the it, it makes good sense to me. I know it's always a challenge um, in our negotiations, kind of going back and forth between, um, you know, flexibility and the our our school leadership's um, you know, plans and priorities, and then security for our workforce. Um, but I do think, 
you know, just as someone who visits the schools in my district and, and talks to leadership, and there's a bunch of counselors on the call who've been doing that for a long time, I do think it's important for our school principals and heads of school to have the, um, the flexibility to build out a leadership team that, that they choose and that can kind of help take, take the school in the direction they're trying to take it. So I think that that um, proposal that's been agreed as part of this, um, you know, makes good sense. Um, and I just wanted to highlight that as well. Um, as part of part of the result of this negotiation. Um, so uh, I guess anything, any any other comments you wanted to offer, Mr. Hassan, before I turn to public testimony? Well, I, guess I just want to thank you, Madam Chair and, uh, and counselors, again, Flynn, uh, Flaherty and Asabi George for, for speaking uh, in support of uh, both the work of my office uh, and our bargaining partners uh, specifically basis here. Uh, we really appreciate your, your support on this. Um, and again, we, we request that you uh, reiterate that support to the general counsel uh, at the time of the vote. So thank you very much for, for coming and for your time today. Thank you. Um, and and yes, I, I do intend to recommend um, passage of these two dockets uh, at our council meeting on the 27th of January. So happy to support that. Um, and uh, um, do my colleagues have any final comments? Yeah, um, Council, sure. Council yeah. Barker, I, I, I just have a quick question for Mr. Hassan. Um, generally, if you could generally speak about, um, I have an idea of, of how it works, but maybe, maybe you can provide a little bit more information. When a contract, it's like this contract will soon expire, um, and generally speaking, what is the process of starting up negotiations again with this with this group or with um, BTU when when you have an expired contract that you're working on? When do you engage them to start uh, negotiating again for for another contract? What is the time period like, and what is that? What is that process like in terms of restarting the negotiation process? Okay, so, Councilor, thank you for. And I just want to clarify this. Actually, if um, this is ultimately finalized, uh, it will actually have already expired in August. Um, so we'll be kind of without a contract again. And and just to kind of, it can vary a little bit. Uh, I guess I can't. Any attorney uh, answer? It depends, um, but I'll, kind of generally speaking, it uh, before the contract has expired, usually the bargaining unit will notify the employer of their desire to to begin negotiations and um, start the the process. So we've been in preliminary talks with our the majority of our units. Uh, I believe um, I don't know if it was mentioned earlier, but uh, I think. It, 11 of our 12 bargaining units are actually uh, working without a contract right now. They all expired either in June or, uh, or August of this year. Um, so we've been in preliminary talks about setting up the, the next round of bargaining. Uh, I, I think given the ongoing uh, situation and pandemic, um, things are a little bit more delayed than they typically would be. Uh, for, for starting those negotiations just because there's been uh, kind of such, such a dynamic situation with, uh, with changing demands of the school department and kind of uh, focusing on how we can serve our students that uh, our, our bargaining units uh, uh, thankfully and respectfully have not really been pushing us to, to sit down immediately uh, because they're, they're kind of allowing us the time to focus on uh, meeting student needs at this time, which we appreciate. Uh, but we, we do anticipate beginning uh, rather soon here as we get into the, the new year, uh, sitting down with our, our bargaining units and just getting the process started, uh, you know, setting the ground rules for the negotiations and that can vary by, uh, by unit. Um, but yeah, I guess to, to kind of answer your question is they'll typically uh, re uh, request bargaining start starting uh, right before their agreements expire. And then the parties will work together to schedule uh, a, a timeline of meetings and, um, and it may vary depend on, depending on the needs of 
our office of the bargaining uh, leaders for any individual unit. So there's not really like a set timeline. And as you can see here, they can drag on for extended periods uh, in some respect, in some occasions, sometimes they can uh, be agreed upon and finalized uh, rather quickly. So. The, thank, thank you, Mr. Hassan. And uh, no, no further questions, Council Buck. Great, thank you so much, Councillor Flynn. Um, Councillor Asabi George, any final questions or comments? Yes, just a brief question. Sorry, and it may have been answered earlier and I missed it. Any uh, members of BASIS who have retired in this period of time, will they be receiving um, a retroactive, retroactive pay? So for, for the period that they worked, they would see the, uh, the increases, um, you know, so. If you uh, resign, uh, you know, retired after the 2017 season, you'd see the increase for, for that year. Um, Great, thank you. That, that, that's it. The answer is yes. Thank you. And so that takes up. I mean, there's 240 members in the unit, but that that takes up the number of people being affected here to kind of how many? Would you say roughly? I actually don't have that number on hand. Um, I, I don't think it would be a huge number, but I can't say for sure. Scale wise though, are we talking about like another, uh, let's say like 10, 20, 30, or are we talking like another hundred? Or? That, that would be my estimate. Uh, it's not, this isn't a unit that uh, sees a huge turnover year to year. Um, so more in that. It would be more in that 10 to 20, uh, more in that range. So I, I could come back with a, a more definitive number if, if needed, um, but it's not a, it's not a, a huge number. Again, this unit doesn't see a, a ton of turnover year to year. Great. All right. Well, I think those are everybody's questions. I want to thank you again, um, both you and the basis team for um, you know negotiations of goodwill and also like you know really trying to get to an agreement in this difficult time for the city um, where where um, they've really been essential workers. So thank you. Thank you for reaching that agreement and thank you for bringing to it to us today. Um, before we conclude the hearing, I do wanna um, move to public testimony. Uh, we have one piece of written testimony um, and, uh, and I think I'm gonna read it into the record um, just so that it's shared with counselors and the public. Um, it's, uh, it's from Dominic Sacchetti, who is the um, basis president. Uh, and uh, Dominic has written to say, Madam Chair, Vice Chair, and members of the Ways and Means Committee, on behalf of the members of the Boston Association of School Administrators and Supervisors, I wanna thank you all for affording me this opportunity to address you in writing on this subject of vital importance to the hardworking members of our union. In lieu of live testimony, I ask that you make the following statement a part of the public record. As most of you know, BASIS represents the school administrators who are on the front lines daily in managing our school system, and along with it, our most precious resource, the children who attend our public schools. Our members are mainly veteran educators who care deeply about the mission of BPS and take great pride in their work. My own heart bursts with pride over the ways in which our members have responded to this terrible public safety emergency by standing with you and adopting a stance of cooperation as we partner with the city of Boston to maintain some semblance of educational normalcy during this most abnormal of times. Our administrators have not hesitated to step into the breach throughout the peril, including our members working in the food service delivery system, whose untiring efforts through this crisis have ensured the uninterrupted delivery of meals to our most vulnerable students. Those of you who have visited the schools during this pandemic have seen our members on the front lines with your own eyes. We've worked uncomplainingly without a contract for the last four and a half years and have gone without a raise since November, 2016, while others have secured favorable contracts with raises exceeding the cost of living adjustments now under consideration for us. In short, we have stood by you for the last four and a half years. I now ask that you stand by us. In particular, I ask this body to recommend to the full council that it vote in favor of the mayor's enlightened recommendation to that body that it fund our collective bargaining agreement. Why is it in the interest of the city to see to it that we secure fair compensation? Because we are managing a precious resource. And as I mentioned earlier, we've been doing so without a raise for over four years. During that time, even the modest rates of inflation that we've seen in this economy have eroded our buying power and with it, our ability to keep pace as we strive to provide for ourselves and our families. Can the city afford these raises? The answer is yes. More than 18 months ago, when we were at impasse with the city and the negotiations that led to these agreements, a neutral fact finder concluded based on the publicly available data pertaining to the city's financial position that it could afford the raises we seek. The city has that report and if any of you would like a copy, I'm glad to, I'll be glad to make it available. The mayor's request to reduce the reserve set aside to finance collective bargaining agreements demonstrates that the city has the funding available to pay for these raises. 
In closing, I would like to personally thank Boston's favorite and hopefully our soon to be Secretary of Labor, Mayor Walsh for his timely assistance in bringing our longstanding impasse to a successful conclusion. Without that assistance today would not have been possible. I now ask that you take the final step necessary to secure a reasonable compensation for the veteran educators who make up the membership of basis by voting a favorable recommendation on Mayor Walsh's request. Thank you, Dominic Sacchetti, basis president. So um, I wanna thank um, Dom for that uh, public testimony. And I believe that's the only public testimony that we have today. Um, so as I uh, previously noted, as the chair of Ways and Means, I will be recommending at our next Boston City Council meeting um, that the council take a affirmative vote in favor of this um, agreement and the two dockets that we've been considering today. Um, so look forward to that next Wednesday. Um, and in the meantime, just uh, again, wanna thank BASIS and the school department represented by Mr. Hassan today. So with that, this hearing of the Boston City Council's Ways and Means Committee is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you all.